And we are live. Hey guys and girls, welcome to this week's Tuesday Night Live. Nathan Birch here from the Be Invested headquarters. I'm looking at this big beast over here in the background and I can't get behind me at the moment, but it's going to be amazing, right? I've got these uh, digital whiteboards. So I've got uh, one of my clients who uh, who watches all of my lives and uh, YouTube videos and whatnot and he's like, mate, I'm sick and tired of seeing you write on glass whiteboards. You need to invest into these uh, these digital whiteboards. Uh, they're a ViewSonic is the brand uh, whiteboard. So I've got these big digital whiteboards that have come uh, so we can draw and do heaps of cool stuff on them. So maybe next week we do a Tuesday Night Live, we can use interactive and drawing and, and stuff like that. So uh, getting into it tonight, we're going to talk about uh, interest rates, obviously, the uh, the last week uh, I couldn't do a live. Um, I was stuck on a, a webinar. I don't know. Did I do a live of the interest rate? I feel like I didn't do a live of the interest rates this month. Um, first Tuesday. Yeah, no, nah, didn't do a, didn't do a live. It's meant to be last week. So um, yeah, with it, going to talk about interest rates. Pose your questions. Put them there in front of me to have a look at um, and. As you guys hop online, I'm going to jump on and uh, read some news articles. So we've seen the RBA, I'm gonna read the RBA's uh, transcript um, about rate hikes this month, obviously with increased interest rates. Uh, the more that they are doing this, the more fun that's gonna occur for all of us. So a lot of people might be watching and they're thinking, you know, interest rates gone up, scary, whatever. Birchie, you told me they're gonna come down and all that. Um, when they come down, it will be amazing. So it's just a matter of, of, of when. Um, I've got here a little comment here from Sam. It says here the one Aussie dollar is now 66 USD. It's been rising and the USD is weakening. US Fed is pivots and cut rates. USD will become weaker and the AUD will strengthen further. That USD was weak strengthening because of the rate hikes. Once the Fed begins to cut rates in QE, USD will get weaker and their inflation will eventually go hockey stick. Very exciting if prepared with hard assets. Exactly. Thank you for posting that, Sam. I will talk about the US market at the moment. If we look at the US last night, uh, it came out from the Fed that they have reached peak inflation at the moment. And uh, the next move that they'll be having is a reversal in monetary policy with interest rates coming down in the US. Just that one conversation uh, that occurred uh, made the Dow Jones jump up by 200 points within a minute. It was like uh, a, an instant reaction to that. And you know we're seeing the weakening of the US dollar. The US economy, let's just think about what is the US economy? What is the US dollar? How does it play into this big Ponzi scheme that we've got? Um, if you notice, when we buy stuff, we're not buying, when we're buying oil or whatever, we're not buying an Aussie dollar, we're buying the US dollar. So the only thing the US produces is more debt. And uh, you know, the more debt that they produce, the weaker their currency becomes and the stronger our currency becomes against it. So it's a pretty um, deep conversation to be having. But in short, if the US economy is dropping their rates, uh, that means that their dollar becomes weaker, our dollar becomes stronger, um, and vice versa. Uh, we've increased our rates, which is strengthening our dollar. Our dollar is going to get very strong, but it also means um, we've got other issues inside our own closed loop economy. Um, so looking at it, the US is talking about peak inflation. They're talking about reversal in monetary policy. I did say by the end of this year that um, I said that we'd see hyperinflation going back five years ago, right? And when I said hyperinflation, the comments were still on the videos out there. People were like, get off the drugs, Birchie. You're crazy. You're talking about what you want to happen, not what will happen. And the um, reality of it is, is that we're now entering into these sort of phases of time. Um, sometimes we can be a little bit early to the table, uh, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to pan out to what we're seeing here. Um, so if the US starts tapering and changing the direction of monetary policy, that will have a big impact on the global economy because our dollar can't be too strong either. So we've got to drop our rate to keep in line and in sync with the other currencies because if we have a high dollar, then it brings in new issues with people. Um, yeah. So <laughs> Zach just said the thought of rate cuts makes my business more excited than I make her. 
The thought of rate cuts, I think, should make everyone uh, more excited. But I think if we look at the reason why rate cuts will occur, it won't be so exciting. So there's positives and negatives to all these moves that we'll have throughout the markets. But I'm very, very... Uh, there's two things. One is, uh, in the short term, I think we'll see a s slight deflation, um, which isn't really happening. Um, we're just seeing more and more inflation. But we have to look at the jobs data, we need to look at extra levels of data to be able to sort of predict where the next movements are going to come in the market. So I'm seeing stuff like this every day of the week. Um, I, I buy hundreds of properties a month myself and clients, and um, I predominantly buy in the residential space, but I buy a fair bit in the commercial space. I don't talk about it all that often because it's more... Uh, for those that have already built their foundation portfolio and, and whatnot, uh, I buy those sort of assets and not for the base portfolio to do that. Um, but in the commercial space, I'm seeing, um, I've never seen so many liquidations or administrator or receivers appointed sales is what I'm seeing at the moment. I haven't seen a crash in the commercial, commercial space pricing yet, uh, but I've certainly never seen as much liquidation receivership sales of what I've been seeing over the course of the last six months. So there is two markets out there. Um, how long will it last for? Who knows? Um, when liquidity comes into the market again, uh, that's when we'll start seeing those things dry up. So it's a little opportunity there. It's sort of like 2006 and 2005 in the Western Sydney residential property market uh, occurring out in the 2023 um, commercial sector. So um, I'm seeing half-built projects, people that have become liquidated halfway through a project, walking away, away from sites, walking away from the commitments, busted up companies and whatnot. So this one here is actually um, a development here. It says retail investors um, in a $500 million select income fund are set to take a loss on half-built project in the city, city of Melbourne after delays pushed up the costs and prompted the fund manager to sell rather than to put more money in. Um, the project were not willing to pay an extra $7 million to engage a second builder and complete the topped-up 10-storey building after the contractor multi-sieve was removed from the job. Um, uh, the, the fund manager said... The decision was made that it was the best interest of investors to sell and is to move on. Uh, there is potential investors will incur a loss on completion. The valuation would have been around the $23 million mark. But the reality is, is when selling half complete development depends on the level of discount. They're returning. So I've seen some massive, massive buildings out there. Like there's one in uh, Parramatta the other day. I saw of 173 units um, liquidation. They're just a mass out there, right? A mass. So if you think about it, if these guys aren't completing their projects, they're walking away, developments aren't coming through to fruition, there's going to be less stock and putting more pent up demand and pressure uh, in the market, which is, is good for those that are holding assets, i.e. you guys. Um, this one here is going to be a big driver for what is to come next with uh, interest rates and where monetary policy is heading. This goes on to read Australia's records the biggest income decline in the developed world. Economists have urged Treasurer Jim Chalmers to overhaul Australia's tax system after new data showed households suffered the largest fall in living standards of any advanced economy over the past year. Inflation-adjusted disposable incomes have hit their lowest since June 2019 as high inflation and rapid increase in mortgage repayments and rising income taxes ravaged household budgets newly re released data from the OECD shows. So, Something very important there is it says um, since 2019, right? What happened in 2019? The markets all died and they didn't just die and, you know, whatever. They came up with a scenario and said, well, look, we need to stimulate the economy. If they said, hey, we've robbed everyone, we need to inject trillions of dollars worth of liquidity in the system, it would not have been good and it wasn't a good face. So, you know, they found an opportunity with a uh, <coughs> illness and uh, they, they injected liquidity. So for them to inject liquidity, we need to start seeing something that triggers them to have a sort of black swan event uh, to say, hey, because of this, now we've got to make this occur. But it's interesting to see that all the moves that they've made have killed the economy. Um, here's another one of those 
cool articles. Uh, we talk about um, WeWork going under. This is another bank, right? Uh, we haven't seen, if you remember back in February, we saw banks collapse uh, in February, March 2023. Uh, many banks in the US went under. This one here is uh, the, net, the most recent bank. Even, what was it? Um, Credit Suisse went under. If you forget, Credit Suisse, one of the largest investment banking firms in the world, has um, has has gone under this year and had to get a bailout. This one he goes to read. SoftBank posted an investment gain on its Vision Fund in the fiscal second quarter, but booked another quarterly loss. Um, it's a 6.2 billion quarterly loss for a bank. Um, so we've got. Um, Many banks, I don't know if it was SoftBank, there was another one that I saw the other day, I don't think I put the article here, I'll print these articles out and um, and uh, and share them. I, I send them to my team and they print them out for when I'm going to This one here is uh, very important, right? And it goes back to my previous conversation about um, the US, right? So this here is a chart of trading economics, and it goes to show the country list government debt to GDP. And I've circled here where it says the US, right? Why did I circle the US? So if we have a look here, we've got, what are the countries we have? We've got Japan. Tell me something about Japan's economy. They're screwed, right? Now let's go down to Venezuela. Tell me something about Venezuela's economy. They're screwed, hyperinflation. Tell me about Sudan. Tell me about Greece's economy. Right? Singapore, not too familiar on that side. We look at Lebanon. What's happening with Lebanon's economy? Most of these countries, which we're seeing here, have either got stagflation or hyperinflation devaluing their currency. Here we have our friends over in the US. We've got 129% GDP, right? So <laughs> the debt is growing more than what the country brings in per year, right? It's gone up from 120, that's the previous, to now, which is 129. So it's gone up 2% of the GDP. So what that shows is that the debt levels are rising. The more that they've increased interest rates around the world, uh, the more that the bonds have gone up. And the more that the bonds have gone up, that means the more that they've got to pay for the debt. And when they've got to roll over the debt, the more that they've got to pay for rolling over the debt, uh, which means that that will ramp further out of control. So the longer that they're pushing the rates up, well, the more that they push the rates up, um, the bigger that this mess is going to be to clean up. And they can't fix this overnight now. The, the, the mess that's being caused is, is way out of line. Um, going to, I'll pull out the RBA's uh, report from the meeting the other week, uh, which I haven't had a chance to come on. But this one here is interesting. It's a bit controversial. Some of you guys and girls thought that I was off my head when I talked about my thoughts of what happened the last few years. But this one here is an article that I saw on news.com. It says, well overdue, major warning for next epidemic. Australians are being warned of an impending academic epidemic um, with experts suggesting an outbreak of a highly, conduction, highly contagious infection as early as this summer. How do they know that these things are going to happen, right? How, do, how can they pick them up so well that, hey, it's all going to, you know, we can have a massive flu outbreak or a massive certain thing occur. So just something to, uh, to be mindful of. I'm going to share with you guys something interesting. This is property related um, that came out the other day. Um, this one here is from Anastasia Palaje, or however you pronounce her name. Um, all the people that everyone, the lady that everyone is uh, not happy with in uh, Queensland. I actually don't know who actually likes this lady. I've never heard anyone say nice things about her, but anyway, I'm not here to slag out people. She's coming up. I can say something nice about her now. Uh, we're doubling the first home and a grant to $30,000 until 30th of June, 2025. First home and a grant doubled to 30 grand. What does that mean? When we look at what happened the last couple of years here in Sydney, what they did is that they increased first home and a grant, booster grant, boosters for all different things, but uh, the booster grant, the uh, builder grant, 
Um, there's so many grants. Like I think at a point that it was about 50 to 60 grand worth of first homeowner grants that you could get uh, in New South Wales. So um, for them in Queensland to increase uh, the first homeowner grant, all of you folk that have bought thousands, all right, like at least 10,000 properties over the board in Queensland, you're going to see another boom come to Queensland, all right? All because they've printed more money and they're trying to pump up a property segment, right, uh, in the in the Queensland space. So people will be like, yeah, I better go and get my first home in a grant. Um, I better go and get myself into a million worth of debt to build a three-bedroom house with no eaves on it. And uh, that will cause the next level of boom uh, up there, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, I'm going to read um, just a couple of articles here that are on my phone. Um, here's one that just came out on The Australian uh, two days ago. I don't have the whole article here to, to read, but the heading uh, goes in to say, the ASX is tipped to rise as inflation cools and the market's bet on the US interest rate cut by May. So now we have the mainstream media coming out um, saying that stock markets, which I am invested into no paper assets. There's times when I have paper assets, so it's not all about you know, hating on the stock market, but everything's so overvalued in my opinion out there. Um, but they're coming out at mainstream headlines, US interest rate to cut by May. So I thought we'd see the cut by the end of 2023, which we're at the end of 2023 now. I said in my video and podcast that I did on this topic in January 2023, I don't care what happens with the interest rate in 2023, but it's at the end of 2023 that I think we'll see it lower than what it was at the start, which once again, when I'm wrong, I say that I'm wrong, um, but whether I'm wrong by two months or three months, the sentiment out there and the data that is flowing is that, you know, they've gone too far with these uh, with these increases. So uh, interesting to see um, that and I believe once we start to see the first rate cut, um, that signals something very important. It shows that we have that the central bank has lost control of their currency and monetary policy is out the window because um, they've tried to control inflation, which they haven't, right? Think about what is cheaper. There is nothing cheaper in December 2023 or November 2023 than what it was at the start of 2023, or in 2022, or 2021. Nothing is cheaper. It's only gone up higher and higher. It just hasn't gone up at the same sort of rate. So they haven't done anything to remove what is the damage has been caused. They're only trying to contain it, which they're actually cracking a part of the economy. So we've now got a divide in different segments. Some markets are booming because of inflation. Some markets are booming no matter what about interest rates. Some markets are completely and utterly dead and uh, people are in some severe troubles, right? You go look at the job market, it's fantastic out there because, well, not if you're looking for a job but as an employer because a lot of people are letting people go, there's less people hiring, lots of issues out there. Some people are winning and some people are losing. So um, if you think about it, it doesn't matter what happens to the economy, uh, if there was a big market crash tomorrow, all the houses that are there would still exist. Um, the values might be different. If there's a big boom, they'll still all exist. The houses the prices will be different. Uh, the people that owned them might be different. Um, and wealth and assets are always there. They just change hands from weak hands to, to strong hands. And uh, I think those of you that are well equipped, those of you that are knowledgeable, those of you that can prognosticate and see what is happening with the data and what's happening in the future um, will look at things and be like, yeah, I can make a very educated decision. Is a bet against the market, which monetary policy has no power anymore. So when, once they do, it won't just be one rate cut. It will be one rate cut. Shit, that didn't work. We need to go a half percent, quarter percent, full percent, and it will go down much quicker than what it has gone up. So. Take it for what it is. I'm not going to sit here and give you guys uh, which month interest rates will fall, but I, I know that we're at the height of our um, of our cycle. 
I'm going to read an article here, uh, it's on my phone here, uh, from The Guardian. It says, did the US Federal Reserve rein in inflation? Possibly. On November the 14th, remarkably, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics announced the Consumer Price Index was unchanged in October. To be clear, that means that the level of CPI was unchanged it is the rate of growth or inflation, which is actually zero. Um, of course, one month doesn't mean much. Gasoline prices won't plunge by 5% every month as they did between September and October, but there are some also more promising and meaningful longer-term data available. The headline CPI inflation rate over the last 12 months was 3.2, far below the 6.5 average in 2022. At the risk of tempting fate, one might say that inflation battle is being won, right? It appears that the inflation battle is being won. However, um, what happens when they do have to drop monetary policy, right? Those that are doing well today, once interest rates come down, I know that 75% of you, 80% of you guys that are watching, we were like, shit, if I could borrow today, I would buy something, right? So once the parameters get changed around that there, there's gonna be people running to certain directions, right? This inflation has not stopped. They could, it could appear that they've got it under control, wait until they change course of direction of monetary policy because they are forced to. Um, from the government's going broke, US economy going broke, US dollar crashing, whatever. And we will see um, what a hyperinflation looks like. So inflation is not going away. It might appear that it will for six months, 12 months, whatever. But I think we all know when we go shopping. Have you ever noticed, this is probably the funniest thing out there, right? This is the funniest thing out there. Just gonna have a little sip of water. When I was a kid, my mum would take go would go to Woolworths or Coles or wherever, Franklin's, one of those places, um, and you'd go and push a trolley around, and it would be the deep trolley, right? It's a big fucking metal trolley, and you could put a lot of stuff in there. But when you go to the shops now, you have two different rows of trolleys. You've got the big trolley, right? And you've got the, the little one, which just basically looks like a shelf, right? It looks like a little basket, right? And... Um, People are pushing around these little half trolleys or a third of the size trolley, right? You put your stuff in there and it feels like you've got a full trolley. But think about it that way, right? Your parents used to come through when you were a kid with a full fucking shopping trolley, right? But now you've only got a third of the size shopping. It's like a shelf that you're walking around with a shelf. It's like, I'd feel uncomfortable holding those little shopping trolleys. Where's the rest of the basket? Like, you know, um, uh, you can't even take a full load of shopping, which is... Uh, Insane when you think about it. How much does that cost? None of you are seeing reprieve from this. You might see the stats changing, but you ain't seeing the facts in the shops that are changing. So, um, this article goes on to say, oh, I've got heaps of stuff in here. I've, I've got other things to uh, read. Here's just an interesting line. It says, the, the story in other developed economies is similar, with inflation rising in 21 and 22, then falling. Why would inflation, and I'll ask this at the time and think about it now, why would inflation go up dramatically in 21 and 22 when we've had everyone locked in their house, everyone being forced to, you know, the economy has jammed up completely, but we had the highest level of inflation. Why did that occur? That occurred because they printed money, and no one ever talked about this. It was China, it was Russia, it was this, it was that, it was the next thing. Anyway, it says that other uh, countries lag behind that of the US. Canada, the Eurozone, Japan, UK are all growing more slowly than the US, and inflation in Europe has not fallen as much as it has across the Atlantic. Inflation remains very low in Japan. So it's about keeping their... Um, their currency at a certain level because if the US dollar crashes or if the Aussie dollar crashes, then that has another uh, flow on effect. So let's just assume if Australia did not increase their interest rates um, last month, yeah, we could say inflation or we could say other things that could occur. Um, 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 sorry, just got text coming through. <laughs> With it, the um, what was I saying at the time? Just text never stopped coming through. Um, when, if we were to see uh, that we didn't push our interest rates up, what would occur is that the, that the Aussie dollar would fall backwards. And if the Aussie dollar was to fall backwards, that would mean that our imports would go up. 
So you would have to buy more US dollars because the US dollar would rise compared to the Aussie dollar. And that means that everything that we're importing and we're a consumer society, so everything that we're consuming would go up in value. And that means that um, you know, would be paying a lot more, which would add to our bottom line of inflation. So these things are locked in and it's sort of baked in the cake, but we're now seeing um, you know, words out that the US is going to change course of direction with its monetary policy. And you know, when that day comes, it's going to be very, very uh, interesting because it's a matter of um, it's a it's a red it's a white flag, you know. Oh, we've given up, we're screwed. So let's look at what all the lies look like. So I'm reading the article here from uh, the uh, press release, a media release from the um, this this new chick. Uh, from the RBA, oh, it always gets me their logo. Look at their logo there. It looks like the devil's head, right? Just go and look at it. It's a very odd website. Not that I know what the devil looks like, but it looks like something. Right? It looks like the evil, the evil uh, dude off the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something. Statement by Michelle Bullock. I mean Bullock. <laughs> um, at his meeting today, the board decision was to raise the cash rate by 25 basis points to 4.35 and also increase the interest rate paid on exchange settlement balance by 25 basis points to 4.25%. Inflation in Australia has passed its peak but is still too high and is proving more persistent than expected a few months ago. They just said, do you remember um, about three years ago, two years ago, when they started printing off all this cash, um, they said that inflation was transitory. Do you remember that? It was transitory, right? And then all these different things that uh, that that, uh, that that have come from it. Um, and it says that it is proving more persistent than expected a few months ago, right? That the word that just is very odd, right? This is from the the governor of the Reserve. Um, the latest regarding the CPI inflation includes that while price goods. Inflation has eased further. The prices of many services are continue to rise briskly, right? So they're increasing interest rates. And at the time that they're increasing uh, interest rates, the um, inflation is going up even further. So I said that at the start would happen. So the CPI inflation is now expected to be around 3.5% uh, by the end of 2024. So at the end of next year, they're saying it will go down. Um, and at the top of the target range of 2 to 3% by the end of 2025. So it's another two years before we'll get back into where they're expecting it to be. The board judged an increase of interest rates was warranted today to be more assured that inflation will return to target in a reasonable time frame. They can't control it. The board has held interest rates steady since June, following an increase of four percentage points since May last year. So if you think about it, interest rates are pretty high at the moment comparison to what they were. But they've only gone up since May last year. So even at this point, we're only up 18 months. If you take out a mortgage, you're taking out a mortgage over 30 years, right? 30 years at 12 months, that's 360 months. 18 months out of 20 out of 360 months of a mortgage. It's not really that bad, but people get so focused and caught up and oh my gosh shit, you know, this is what it is. But this is a time to be able to get your life in order and be able to um, you know, adjust cash flows. If interest rates, someone just said beforehand, um, if someone said here beforehand, uh, I've got a, it's another screen over here actually, I've got two screens here, um, that um, someone asked, uh, wouldn't rent go down if we see another catastrophe like we saw a few years ago? Um, the catastrophe we saw a few years ago caused rents to double. Uh, I saw a report the other day, um, I forget where I saw it, uh, it's not here in my articles, I did share it with the team. Um, there used to be about 10% of rents, and I did this stat once beforehand, that were below 200, that were 200 bucks a week, had a two in front of them, and then it went up to 300. And I saw a report the other day that said um, there's only 11% of rents in the whole market that are at $400 per week or less, right? So literally rents at the lowest end of town have doubled in the last two to three years. So um, would rent go down if there was a catastrophe? It could possibly for what, six months? But if you're holding a property for 30 years, that's six months out of 360 months. It's not really, you know, I'd rather 
you know, have the interest, I'd rather have the interest rate go up for a period of 18 out of 360 and then to come down lower for the other, you know, 348 that would occur or 300, whatever it would be, 342. So, um, yeah, just interesting to be looking and, and seeing how long, because it might feel like it's been all eternity that interest rates have gone up. Um, they're saying that interest rates and inflation will stay to where it is in 2025, but if in March in 2024, uh, the US starts dropping rates, the same thing would occur because you sort of all go up at the same start rate and they come down, they're, they're linked together because of our currency. So, yes, um, I think there's a lot of fluff in there. Um, I'm surprised that they put it up. Um, I'm not surprised. Um, I believe personally that they're pushing it up because they're at 0% interest rates. They had to drop interest rates when they're at 10 basis points. So at least they can come back to you now and go, oh, well, we've got everything in control. We've fucked the economy. Uh, everything's dead. Everyone's, you know, got no jobs. Business has gone broke, whatever. Uh, but, you know, interest rates are coming down and they're back to 10 basis points. And uh, surprisingly, China's caused an issue. We've got a virus happening, climate change, someone's blown up, whatever. Um, uh, we've had to drop the interest rates because of that. And, oh, look at this, inflation is just ravaging the world. <laughs> you can see it, it's writing on the wall. Um, uh, it just takes me back, like that statement I said just a moment ago, inflation in Australia has passed its peak but is still too high and proving more persistent than expected a few months ago. These guys are saying they cannot control inflation. What comes when they can't control inflation? The currency crashes, hyperinflation kicks in. Fixed assets go up, debt becomes worthless, cash becomes worthless. Um, very interesting. Um, so if we look at their CPI, if you go to the website, uh, the CPI says it's 5.4%. Reality of it is, if you go and look at most things, I would think you'd be looking at you know 15%. Um, it's probably three times more higher than that. So, yeah, just an interesting world that we are living in. So, today, um, how to navigate rising interest rates. I have talked about this uh, beforehand. I don't know if it was on Facebook Live or whether it was on a podcast I did recently. Um, but there's going to be one more rate announcement uh, this year. I do believe that they've gone way too high, right? Way too high on pushing up those rates, but whatever they do, I'd love for them to push the rates up. Right? The more that they push them up, the better. Um, each month, when I look at my rental increases at the moment on behalf of my owners, uh, a lot of people don't realize, they go to me, Nathan, why uh, do I, what's the difference between Blink Property? Uh, I can see that uh, I'm sharing this probably for the first time on Blink Property. One of my team have uh, connected this as a cross post to Blink Property, so we might have someone else watching over there. Um, we run a, oh, I built and I run and I'm very actively involved in a property management firm uh, which I created uh, 11 years ago now called Blink Property. We manage properties nationally. And uh, looking at the rents, what happens every month is my team will send me um, uh, all of their rents, their their view on what the rent should go up. And I'd say about 80% of the time, I'm like, cool, the team's on the ball. And then I look at it and I'm like, hang on a second, I don't agree with this one, I don't agree with that one, I don't agree with another one. And those rents might go up an extra 30, 40, 50 bucks per week. Um, and that's looking at all different layers of data that's occurring out there in the markets to make sure that you know we're keeping up with the level of inflation. And let me tell you, the inflation in the rental market has gone insane. And uh, you know, a lot of you guys have very surprised. I had uh, one of my investors today saying that they've got 10 units uh, that have all gone up, like 10 units in the one block, so in the whole block. Um, from 300, I think I paid for this one about 650 grand for 10 units. And people like that, they spit at it and they don't like the deal. They might say it's a bad area or whatever. Like this thing's right across the water from the ocean, um, high growth corridor. Um, I paid 650,000 at the start of 2022 for this investor. The rent on the 10 units are $330 per week. Uh, the rent is going up in January to $380 per week per unit, uh, so it's an increase of 50 bucks. 
which have came up, they're 200 bucks a week each, so two grand a week, and now we're getting 380, so it's almost 180 bucks a week um, per property. That's 1,800 bucks a week. That's 90 odd grand a year that this investor is getting extra cash flow. So if interest rates didn't allow for certain things to happen, they've certainly allowed for other things to happen. So we've got here a little little note here from our friends over in uh, in uh, in New Zealand, Auckland rental increases are up 8.5 percent year on year. And that's just the data that they're sharing with everyone, right? Reality of it is, is that um, you know rents have gone up a lot more. If you put rent up 50 bucks a week on a 300 bucks, that's 20 percent increase. It goes up 100 bucks on a 500 dollar per week rent. That's 20 percent that it's gone up. It's gone up so much. Uh, Luke says here, Birchie, it is. Is it, is it that we have two groups of people, baby boomers with no mortgage, that when rates go up and keep spending pushing up inflation, and then those that have a mortgage that are getting impacted by rate rises, how do we reckon not sell the two to get back into balance? Um, it's got nothing to do with the baby boomers. Um, those guys have worked hard, they've dealt with 20% interest rates and all that sort of stuff. Um, there's a lot of, there is multiple different markets out there. Yeah, you've got, the market that um, is impacted with the mortgage increases, but as I said beforehand, those mortgage increases are over a period of 18 months. Let's say another six months, interest rates come crashing down. What happens? That's two years, that's 24 months out of 360 uh, months worth of um, interest rates that you'd be paying on a mortgage. It is not, it's just a blip on the radar. Chris just wrote here, inflation is eroding their savings, exact, exactly their retirement ability. They retired with a half a million bucks. Half a million bucks in 2019 buys them a lot more than what it does in 2021. Buys them a lot more than what it does in 2021 than what it does in 2023. And the flow and effect will be the same. So it all depends on one's position. And this is just the market. It's just, it's a game that was created by these bankers. and uh, one of someone that watches these pod uh, religiously every week um, did me did a podcast with me a while ago, and uh, he asked me, "Hi George, if you're watching," uh, and he asked me a question after his podcast that I filmed with him, and uh, he said, uh, "What would happen if we went back to a gold standard?" Right, and uh, I, I was interesting, and I looked back, and um, when there was a gold standard with a real money that was attached. Property did absolutely nothing, right? Property prices for 100 years did nothing in Australia, right? They went up and doubled over 100 years, right? Stupid as shit, worthless, right? But property really started to take off in uh, 1933, uh, 1960s, 1970s, and it just continues to go up higher and higher like a hockey stick. And uh, that has nothing to do with, you know, a little bit migration and stuff like that. But what it has mostly to do with is that they've manipulated our currency to the nth degree. And uh, I said to him, he's like, oh, that's interesting, because we're just chatting about it after the podcast. And it's like, that's interesting. And I thought about it, and I was like, hang on a second. Um, we shouldn't be angry at the bankers game, right? They've created this mess and all that, and people feel like they're hard done by it. But if it wasn't for these lovely people out there, if it wasn't for the Federal Reserve, if it wasn't for all the banks, we wouldn't have a table to play at, right? I am thankful. Actually, the video thanking the, uh, the, the, the bad, slippery hands that are out there. Um, and I, th I, I thank these hands that play because if they didn't have this system for us to sit at the table, we wouldn't be able to have a game to play at. So if you can understand their game and how they benefit, then it's... Um, you know, that, that game is for a sort of play at, so it's very important. Um, Chris said a gold standard would bring everything back to an even playing field. It would be honest, yes, uh, but it wouldn't be good for us guys and girls that are trying to make money and capitalize on anything else apart from money. So, um, it, it, yes, what's right and what's not, I'm not saying it is right out there, but they've created this table and everyone should be playing at it, and that's really, really important. Um, the um, Paul just says, "Am I correct? Someone paid six hundred and fifty grand for ten units. Yes, so sixty-five grand a unit, and they rent for three hundred and eighty bucks per week each. Yes, uh, so it's three thousand eight hundred per week. 
Some people will be like, wow, that's a great return, 200 grand a year on 650. Well, at the time of buying it, it was 100 grand a year and people didn't see the value in it. And this person I just sent it to, they said, yes, they're a really smart investor with very good position and their portfolio is reflective of the efforts and energies that they've put in is from their hard work. So, yeah. Um, uh, yes, questions here. Uh, are you keep are you keeping an eye on the government plans when it comes to limiting the rent increases? If you don't want your council rates to increase, they can say all these things. Good luck to them. There's no real way of policing it. It's like another land tax grab thing that they're talking about. I have zero uh, I have zero concern about that. Um, if they do try and control rent caps, he's a, a fun game to play, right? Who's ever watched that movie, McDonald's, the founder, the founder, right? And they say, you can control the business, right? But the business control is via the land. So it's the land that you own and the stuff that gets controlled. So the government's trying to impose these laws on people being landowners or whatever, because you don't really own the land or you don't really own the property. You can pay for your mortgage owner outright, but you still... If you go and look at the contract, right, this is why the whole matrix and the whole system is fake. Um, it, it says that you're a tenant in common when you're buying a property, right? It's not saying that you own it and you're the crown or whatever. So you have all these underlying levels of government and commies. So if we did get to such a communist state, and what I would do and what I would encourage with everyone, and um, I own lots of, you know, um, infrastructure from in the real estate industry out there, right? I own rental, I can control markets when it comes to rentals because we've got such exposure and stuff like that. We could just decide to take properties out of the rental market, right? Imagine we say, okay, um, 10,000 properties for rent. We're gonna take out all the tenants, get out, everyone get out. <laughs> Imagine that. Just think that for a second, right? Um, this video may not you know, age well in the future, uh, not for me getting aged, but what I just said there, just think about that, right? We get 10,000 properties, take them out of the market. That would cause a big impact. That would be a very negative thing in the market. So yes, they can try and control things. What about if there was a corporation that rented everybody's property? And then on top of that corporation was a business that run. They're talking about a landlord putting up the rent. But what about if you, just think about it now, right? You've got BlackRock, Vanguard, all these bad bankers out there. <laughs> Look, you see the glitch there, right? You see the glitch, right? And that's why I see the importance of, you want to own the race horse or you want to own the, own the race course, right? You can control what horses play on that game, right? So looking at, um, you know, the parameters BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street and all them are building these housing funds, buying up houses by the thousands and doing whatever they want with them. They're controlling areas of the market, which is not good for people, right? There's talks about Amazon housing, like Amazon, the company and stuff, like on the internet, about them coming in and buying up housing. Who knows what they're going to do in the future? But people got together. Well, what about if you didn't rent your property? Let's say that you guys watching this decided to rent your property to a big corporation. And that corporation then decided the rules to play with. They can't attack the corporation because the corporation is bigger than the lobbyist groups. You know, there's certain things out there. Probably not going to be me. There'll be a lot of other people out there being able to do that. But um, I'm not concerned by that at all. Um, it doesn't make the decisions I make when I get up in the morning or, or anything like that. So um, I'll go to some more of your uh, comments here. Um, uh, keep the comments coming. Um, you're right with mainstream media announcing taming rates. Uh, yesterday, Birch Dow shot up overnight. Imagine reaction with a 1% drop. If the interest rates dropped, right, you'd have all the scaredy cats and all the ones that are, oh, don't do it, whatever, right? They wouldn't do anything for another 6 to 12 months, right? It's that window, the day that interest rates drop, if you don't try and get your loans restructured, equity out, the best interest rate product, when I say the interest rate product, it's not the interest rate, it's a product. You need a 30 year product that will take you for that next journey, right? If you don't restructure your debt, 
the first day, take out your equity and go and jump on all these assets, people will, right? The boom that will come won't happen the day the interest rates drop by 1%. The boom will come that six to 12 months afterwards and everyone will be like, well, I can't get a property that used to be 300 grand. Now I can't get them under 600 grand. Oh, how dare they do this, right? It's this person's fault, it's that person's fault. But um, I'm just waiting for it, right? I'm saying um, my goal uh, next year is probably to pick up another 100 residential properties myself. That's going to be my goal. I'm just going to throw it out there, right? My goal for 2024 is to buy 100 residential investment properties, 200 grand properties. That's it. Simple goal. Next year. That's my goal. I'm preparing myself. That's what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to have that one goal for my portfolio. <laughs> one goal. Um, that's the goal. So when that day the rates drop, happy days. Um, so inflation control, what can we do to control inflation, they can't do shit. Um, they're trying to, they've thrown the sink at that, they've pushed rates up. Um, the rates have gone up, just think about this, right? The first rate went up in May, 2022. It's been 18 months in November, 2023. Uh, interest rates were 10 basis points, they're now 435 basis points, so they've gone up 425 points. 425 over 10, is 4,250% increase uh, on interest rate. You might sit there and say, well, my interest rates have doubled, they haven't gone up 4,000 times. 4,000% 4, uh, or 442.5 times, they haven't gone up by. Um, no, yours haven't, right? Yours haven't. But when your government takes out a bond, corporations take out debt, right? They have gone up 40 two times, right? Because we're not we don't get the opportunity um, we don't get the opportunity to pick up these interest rates at ten basis points or four hundred and twenty five basis points. It's a premium. Whoever's got their little grubby mitts on and you know giving that to you, you're paying a premium. And your bank's probably taking three percent on that. So you might be paying seven point two five percent on a or seven point three five on a four point three five if you can get that as low as you can, because when the rates come smashing down, it will be the biggest, um, you know, uh, increase that you'll see. So, looking at um, the questions coming through, uh, Gladys, uh, the front runner for Optus CEO job. <laughs> it's funny, right? When you start seeing the digital identities coming through because of identity theft and all those sorts of things, you think, who are your mates that you're in business with in the political space and they're coming over as well, you're doing deals with contracts and different things. It's all a bit of a grey, dodgy pile of stew there. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Birchie, 100 properties in 2024, plenty of people in 2770 will be saying thank you for paying all that stamp duty on a Thursday, a total, total uh, win. Um, Look, it's uh, it's inevitable, right? I pay lots of taxes out there. The 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 matrix and the commies want to try and take as much as they can. It's a matter of being smarter than the uh, the average bear. And uh, yeah, I I, I look at it. Um, Joe just said he had 100 properties go for 200. Now, I'm going to make that my goal, right? I just thought about that. I'm going to make that my goal, right? I've done one of my big goals. There you go. Right? I normally do like hundreds of goals. This is one very simple goal I'm going to throw out there on a property front. I've got business goals, I've got other asset goals that I'm doing and, and whatnot, but um, I think that would be a really good position. And I've been able to, I'll only be able to go and buy 100 properties due to the fact that I have the capital in doing hundreds of properties for the years beforehand and the, the decades beforehand. It's two decades now, 2023 is two decades of buying assets. So if I didn't do uh, that, I wouldn't be able to be here. Luke said, how's the 100 motel goal going? Not as good as what I'd like it to be. Um, what I mean by that is I'm only at about 25. I've been in the industry for about two years. I'm probably the largest motel owner in the country, like as far as keys go, it's the fastest growing uh, motel group out there. It has been clunky along the way, lots of things that I didn't know anything about. Um, 
sometimes I think, fuck, why am I doing this for? Right? Just like, something like, why am I buying five properties and I've got a tenant that didn't pay rent or whatever the case might be. But it is just a, um, you know, a part of growing and learning, refining your systems, processes, procedures. Um, I'm way on track for that. And if I really look at it, like I set a goal in 20, oh, I was 30 years old, so it was like eight years ago. And I said I'd be a billionaire by the age of 40. And uh, inflation is doing a wonderful job of helping me get there. And uh, will I be a billionaire by 40 or will it be 41 or 42? Who knows, right? There's still two years to go. <laughs> um, yeah. Maddie says, if you had to borrow with a third tier lender, would you? I've borrowed from anyone, right? <laughs> Literally, uh, there's been times if someone wants to sit there and be like, oh, Birchie's had it easy or whatever, I've had to, I may as well, uh, I may as well get on my knees and uh, borrow that way. Um, I've borrowed uh, all different sort of ways and structures and strategies and lenders that are out there. Um, third tier lender sounds like fun. Uh, there's a lot lower ones than that. And, um, you know, I've, I've seen people that get borrowing. There was a point when I got stuck about seven years ago. Uh, like I've had my, my troubles over the years, right? And uh, there's a time when I got stuck at, um, you know, I had about $10 million worth of property settling. And today, if I had $10 million settled, I'd be like, oh, well, that's all right. We'll just shift this and move this and do that. But seven years ago was a long time in my portfolio, uh, in my asset position and net worth. And, a lot less grey hair and, and all that sort of stuff. But um, I, I I had to get interest rates of like 2% per month, 2.5% per month. And they were like, <laughs> someone just said, go with private mortgage and go out with a bank. Um, I've, I've been to all those positions beforehand. So I don't suggest people to go and do that. Uh, second and third tier lenders, there's some very wonderful products out there. Uh, definitely got them in my portfolio. Got all, all the way through. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I, I um, yeah, I, I think that there's, you know, if it's going to be a good pushing point for you to get to your goal, if it's going to help you get there, you need to factor in the cash flow. There's lots of um, moving parts in a portfolio. Definitely not worth something laughing at or spitting at or whatever. If someone said to me today, hey, Birchie, I'll give you a you know, 10% interest, go and buy $10 million worth of property, I'd go, cool, let's take it, let's go. Um, Depends on the terms, depends on that. It's a 30 year mortgage. It may not be that, you know, disrespect, disgusting, right? Depends, some people are like, oh, it's 8.5%, not 7%. Oh, it's 7%. It's like, well, if you're going to let 1.5% of an interest rate impact you, you can go and get the rent and push that up to cover that. Well, then you're letting fear get into your goals. So, yeah. Um, uh, we're all going grey, yeah, it happens if we're lucky, we all get to go grey. I've got good crop of hair here. Um, I'm 38 now for the answer of how old I am now. Uh, must we be using a finance when purchasing through your company? No, you're free to use whoever you wish. Uh, Rose, who is the head of Xena Finance and my team, um, I uh, Rose has been my broker now for about 20 years personally, uh, going back three, four years ago. Uh, Rose came on, I asked her to please come on and help um, with my team and she uh, has so much experience there, We've got a very knowledgeable team and we're consistently growing that team um, and she shares her knowledge and wisdom to be able to um, you know, get that knowledge out to everyone. So I know when building a portfolio, there's not, I see people that, going back to 10 years ago, 15 years ago in the business, People go, what, you're a buyer's agent, you want me to pay you to buy a property? And I'm like, yeah, that's what we do. We charge a fee and we buy a property. You buy 50K below market value and they're like, wow, I can go find a property myself. I'm like, off you go, go find it, right? No one knew what a buyer's agent was. Nowadays, you see all these property gurus out there that um, that own nothing and uh, they, they, they've got their, their stripes on the back of a Kellogg's box and uh, they are a buyer's agent. and um, what that's done has you know, made the industry. Everyone's like, wow, you've, you're a buyer's agent. Oh, okay, cool. So I'm okay for it from that perspective. But what I do see is these guys haven't built a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 property portfolio before. Neither has their team around, their brokers, their accountants, their lawyers, or whatever. So there's not the knowledge out there. So I see people talking about buying properties, buyer's agents, whatever. 
they don't have the knowledge on being able to build a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 property portfolio, so they wouldn't know how to structure that from a lending perspective. So here you can get people that can get lo uh, loans for you, but structuring it is the, the, the biggest uh, part to it. Because I see people go, oh, we'll just get a 95% OBR and we'll cross collateralize the properties and the best way to go about it is use a smaller deposit and they're all out there just to screw you up and then you get stuck at four properties and you go, how do I get to 20 like on a Virtues uh, community and they just can't get there. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, interest rates out there, I've seen them 6.2 for a own occupier, yeah, 7%, depending on the lender, you know, seven and a half, eight percent um, Yeah. Joe, yes, half of them don't even have three properties. So make sure when you've got someone that's helping you that they're going to have the ability to get you to where you want to be. If they don't have what you want, if you go into a personal trainer and they're fat, right? It's like, well, you ain't a fucking walking example of that, um, you know, of what I want to be. So be careful with who's got what when they're advising you. So if you do what they've done, you'll get what they've got. So, yeah, one of the other things is like, uh, we're talking about this um, this beforehand, the uh, first time in a grant. I did a video or a podcast, actually. I filmed the, the podcast um, the other day about should you take a first time in a grant or not. Um, they can be good for some people. Uh, they may not be good. I think that that podcast will be coming out this Thursday. So if you are not familiar with the podcast out there, uh, it's called the No BS with Birchie podcast. You can find it on Google Play, Apple Play, Spotify, and YouTube. Um, I understand that people that listen to the podcast don't know how to do Facebook. Uh, people that know how to do Facebook don't follow the podcast. It is different content out there. I filmed this. Um, this uh, is actually, people ask me, where's the podcast, Birchie? And so many people text me and said, are you okay? And that. I had a bit of a change in some of my, my team here. I've grown. I've got a videographer coming in next year. I've got some more staff um, in my um, communications team. And um, I just, we ran out of podcasts and I've been too busy to film them. So I had some little breaks and I was able to film a couple of podcasts on my phone, embarrassingly enough. So there's no visit video. It's me with the podcast filming it from the phone. Um, uh, I've started filming back again, so there's some scheduled in, and this Thursday I'm filming another half dozen of them to get us through to the summer period. Um, so yeah, with it, make sure you do listen and subscribe to the OBS Virtue Podcast every Thursday. I do, that's not my closing line of the podcast, that one. But um, I did go into quite a lot of detail on the first home grant. So if you are a first homeowner, uh, you're thinking of getting started, I reckon, out of my investors that I work with in my community, um, I reckon probably 50-50 uh, people coming on for the first time come to us. Uh, people that have got two or three properties want to get more come to us. But if you're a first homeowner, you can be easily, uh, uh, you know, caught in by the lights of all this. Uh, a first home in a grant is very good for a, a person like myself or you guys as investors. First home in a grant isn't really good for a first homeowner. So be careful, I'll put caveats on that, listen to the podcast coming, dropping shortly. Um, Andrew shared the link to it, the podcast, the Apple link uh, in, the, uh, in the in the description. So thank you, Andrea. Um, uh, <laughs> oh wow, Chris said here, boy oh boy, I'm currently with a reputable buyer's agent who still hasn't been able to find me a property after 24 weeks. What are you finding to be the time frame to find property? As a buyer's agent, this is a bit off topic, right? A bit off topic, I was talking about interest rates today, but we're in the question section now, of part of tonight. Um, I don't run a buyer's agent where it says, hey, can you um, can you find me this? So I want it to be this, 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 this. Um, the, uh, I run my office very differently. I do all the purchasing myself. People tell me what they want to achieve. They've got to trust the process cliche as it sounds. Um, so I run my business as far as building in that portfolio. I give you what you need to build that portfolio. Most of my clients, you know, after 24 weeks, they've probably got 10 properties in their portfolio. So um, I find properties daily. Um, as I get those deals, I sit there and I go, okay, I've got 
three properties. They're great. They're good from equity, cash flow, you know, growth, whatever. Um, what does each one of my investors need for their portfolio? And I tailor made it to the strategy of what you need. And I say, this is the property that you need for your portfolio. You say yes or no. If you don't want to buy it, I'll put it on the next person. And I'll come back to most people and say, hey, you said no to that deal. I just pulled out 50 grand equity. Here's a copy of the Val or whatever, right? Like, you know, learn from that for the next time. So, um, yeah, I run my office very differently. I, I, I don't know how buyers agents are meant to operate out there. I just know what we do. Um, I find people, I've got a client I spoke to the first time today. I've sent them three properties, um, two for their super, one for their personal name. Uh, I think I'm going to make a bit like, whoa, fucking three in a day, right? Um, but that's how we build large portfolios. You don't get there from you know, messing around and, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, good one, Luke. That's an interesting uh, question there. It says, uh, Birchie, the mega mansion in Knightsbridge uh, pray that East Sovereign Islands are going to auction next month. You did a video on it eight years back in your MR2. What are your thoughts on what it will go for now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that house was a, a big mansion. It cost like $25 million to build it out of the ground on like six blocks of land. Those blocks of land are big worth $3 million a block now, so it's $18 million just for the, the land or however many blocks. I think it's on three blocks of land. It's probably like $10 million just for the land. Um, I did hear something about it. It was last time up for like $30 million. Um, I wouldn't like to guess what it would go for. It's not in something that I would buy. Um, it's a cool property, but you know, once again, probably a different point in my life now. I probably wouldn't even want to buy that. Um, I'd be more somewhere secluded, recluse, off a cliff top. There's actually a property online. And there's actually a property online that I'd like to buy. Maybe people can play a guessing competition which one it would be. There's a property online. It's in New South Wales. It is a baller house. It's too much for my budget of what I would be wanting to spend, um, but I'd buy that one day. I'd buy it one day. It's a fucking baller house. But if those things there now, you know, I wouldn't like to guess. Maybe 30 million, maybe 25 million, maybe 40 million. The market has gone nuts. I actually own a, a property, own a block of units uh, just off that street, uh, not on Sovereign Island, it's just outside the Sovereign Island, own a block of units out there, um, which is pretty cool. It's done, done great. Um, John said here, Birchie, can you do a podcast on buying properties through your super if you haven't already? I will do that, actually. I will do that. I can't give financial advice. I might actually get my cool... Like this thing here, if I give some aspect, I just said give me the biggest screens. I've got one that was not as big. I think it's like 80 inches and then another one that's bigger. And uh, this thing takes up a whole fucking wall here but it'll be cool for videos and podcasts. So I will get on the whiteboard. I can't give financial advice when it comes to super funds, but I will. And if the regulators want to have anything to say about it, they can get stuff because I'm not, I'm going to talk about it with general sort of views and general stuff like that. You can add and sprinkle your thoughts and stuff like that in between. And I'll add a lot of disclaimers in there. Uh, not that I like financial advisors, but a sensible thing would be speak to a financial advisor or the other one would be, um, you know, make sure you do self-research and all that. So, um, with that, yeah, I will do something there for you. Um, George has asked, can you do a podcast on the evil elites who rule the world? Uh, I could actually do that. Um, a lot of people think it's certain banking families. Uh, there's lots of different bloodlines and different types of blood that people have, different types of bloodlines, uh, different types of ruling families. And the people that everyone pokes their fingers at, there's like 13 bloodlines that rule the world. And um, yeah, I could do a podcast or a video on that for you, George. Um, I'm actually do something here, folks, as well. I've got another page um, which I, I talk about stuff which could be deemed as conspiracy. If I was ever to get a page to be cancelled, I wouldn't want it to be one of these pages. Um, so I've got another page which a lot of you may or may not be on. It's called Be Decentralised. So not Be Invested, it's called Be Decentralised. Um, go and subscribe to Be Decentralised. I haven't posted, it used to be like a crypto sort of thing. I used to post stuff about crypto. And you might find some funny stuff from like five years ago, ten years ago. It's like 
very anti system. Um, I will start posting a lot more on there of the course of course the next year. Um, and I will make really out there videos and really out there content over there. So stuff like what you've just asked for, George, I will um, send that over to that uh, that that page. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want to know if you've got a sticky over me talking about super, but uh, yeah, I'll leave that one there. Um, uh, check out the podcast. I can't email them. Check them out. No BS with Bertie podcast. Uh, there's a link in the description here. Andrea posted it beforehand. You can get access to it. So, um, yeah. On that note, folks, um, Lisa, I know you'll love it. Like, I know you'll love it. I send you, Lisa, stuff in my Instagram, just random stuff. Sometimes I send a lot more stuff out there. I just don't want to bombard heaps of people. But I will, if you guys want some out there views on the world i will do it over on the um on the be decentralized facebook page um next year um if you're not on birch feed go to birchfeed.com um yeah um chad just said the debt jubilee <laughs> i posted in birch feed the other very time you literally wrote that after i said join birch feed i posted something there um in in birch feed the other day you can get access to birch feed it's free birchfeed.com follow the Instructions, it's free. Don't be a tight ass anyone, it's free. You don't have to spend a cent. Um, but, um, 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 uh, debt jubilee, I posted about that the other day. Even my closest financial mates had said, What the fuck is a debt jubilee? And I'm like, It's a very common thing. Like, I'll research it, and it's actually biblical, it was in the Bible as well. Um, and every sort of 50 years or so, they do a debt forgiveness uh, in a different sort of format. And it's not always called a debt jubilee, but it's classed as a debt jubilee. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's research debt jubilee. Uh, I believe that will come as a part of the hyperinflation, as a way for them to blow up all the debt that's out there. And it's a very, very exciting, um, exciting, uh, exciting time. So... <laughs> Brendan, uh, one day, one day we will, one day we'll have the be invested blunt. I keep getting asked about a Birchie with the puff puff pass. It's a very long time since I've had one, but I'm not going to have one. But we could. It's, it's fun. I love the comments. So keep them coming. It makes me, makes it gets me, gets me fired up for the fun of the community. So, um, uh, Julie, Julie says here, are your thoughts on bail on a bailing, um, a bailing? It's very possible. Um, the money is never ours. Uh, it's always out of the bank. Um, the money doesn't exist. It's just digits on a ledger. Uh, a bail-in, when we go completely cashless, we will be on a bail-in because you can't get your money out. There's no in and off rent. So you're always trapped into the bank. So it's, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't trust, I don't trust uh, big amounts of cash. I'd prefer to have uh, asset to bring in cash flow. Um, I keep talking about that. I try to keep as little amount in the bank as possible. Um, my banks, when I deal with them, they're like, I was talking to a banker recently, and I said, oh, you know, about oh, you, Dr. Cash goes over here, whatever, in the bank account. So like, I never see money in your bank account, right? I'm like, because I take it out. Look, I look at all the transactions, right? It's gone every day. I'm like, get, the, get that shit out of there. I don't want cash sitting there. Um, in a lot of uh, scriptures, it actually says, I'm not going all biblical, everyone, but it actually says it's bad to hold money because it's, it's called currency, right? And currency, just like the sea of current or the, the sea of uh, all the, the currency running through your electricity, it needs to be moving to be effective. And if you have stagnant currency, um, it's kind of a, a waste. So, yeah, that's, um, yeah. Uh, Birchie, are you doing the 12 days of Christmas? Ugh. I won't uh, be dressing up with a big grey beard or anything, but uh, I will put deals out there. I think I've got 23 deals of 23 coming out. So there'll be like just a few deals that we've done of this year, which I actually just recorded it uh, on my phone. I I've found so I've been so busy getting the time to record new content lately. It's been a bit of a troublesome thing for me. I've just got so many things that I've been working on business-wise, property acquisition-wise, all that. Um, and I've recorded 23 deals of 23, and I might put out 23 deals of like a half minute video. I was just like, it's very boring. I've been told from my team, 
that sounds boring as fuck. Like, no one would want to listen to a 20 minute video, but I think you guys would love it, right? Because, like, this deal is great. This deal I bought for 200 grand, it's now worth 280 grand. Ran it for 250. I think you'd love it. So, yeah. Um, Luke said, could you bring in Bo Chase for a goal session? No, I could ask Bo. He actually texted me today. He reminded me to text Bo back. So uh, if Bo's watching, I'll get back to you. Sorry, brother. Uh, but yeah, I'll see what I can do. Um, we will have another pod, another webinar coming up shortly. Last Tuesday, I was double booked. Like, this is how busy I've been. I didn't do the, the Facebook Live last Tuesday. It's every fourth that we go on. Because I had another webinar for a speaking arrangement on behalf of a, a real estate uh, office, so I did a presentation for them and it overlapped, so I had to choose and I was like, I'll do next week, the Facebook, here we are. Uh, Adam just said, I'd love it. Um, I don't know what you're referring to there, just uh, let me know what you'd love to, for, me to, um, for me to do. I think with that, that might be referring to the goal session one, if that's that. Um, just let me know what it is and I'll take a note of that and my team will take a note for that. And uh, we'll go from there. So um, 23 and 23, yes, yes, it's, it's going to come out. So just keep an eye out. Maybe start of December, um, 2nd of December maybe. We'll do 23 deals in 23. So uh, I thought it was like, it, was, it sounds very boring. I'm like, oh, this deal is really great and it's great because it is. It might sound very monotone. I was reading Excel sheets with some valuations and stuff on it. But... I'm fucking pumped by it. I think you guys would too. Because when you see, if you overlay my boring video, chop it up into 23 videos, and then overlay that and think about how much money, if you had bought those 23 properties or your portfolio had 23 properties in it, it would be quite awesome and amazing. And that's what people are doing. So that's what I think is cool. So I will do. Um, cool. Um, on that note, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. It's been a nice one-hour chat. Um, I've loved the engagement. I can see that we've got 88 comments here, 30 reactions. If you if you like tonight's live and you want me to come back next week, I think I've got one of the team members next week. Maybe it's Jeremy. I think it might be Jeremy Johnson, and everyone loves Jeremy, right? They're like, fuck this guy. Keep bringing him on, right? If you like these videos, please share them with your friends and family. Tag all your friends and family in here. Um, smash up a like. Uh, smash up the love heart, smash up the laughing face, whatever it is. And um, yeah, I'll be back next week. I've got one on next week and we, we go from, from there. Uh, Mikey said here, and I'm going to do a video on this. Uh, I'm going to take a note of this in a second. It'd be really cool to see a hundred grand start and then growth sheets on someone, some of the deals over the last couple of years and how you'd scale up. I'm actually going to ask one of my investors, and she knows who she is. I'll talk about her for a bit. Um, I'm going to ask one of my investors, if she started with about 100 grand, if I can pull out all her properties and do a, you know, a snapshot of that to show you real time when it's happened over the last couple of years. So I'll do that. On that note, folks, thank you very much for tuning in, spending your Tuesday night or whenever you're listening to this, uh, you know, being a part of this. Um, we'll catch up soon. If you need help, there's a link in the description. I've seen a couple of you guys saying that you've got a buyer's agent that you think is shit. Uh, your word's not mine. You didn't say shit. You just said that you're really frustrated that it's taken so long and you haven't been able to do it. If you need help structuring the portfolio, you want to engage with me and my team, I'm very active every time. I, if I say I've bought a deal for someone, I've done the deal. I've port, port, built the portfolio for that person. My team are here to help assist you. If you want to start that journey, uh, you can log in or click on the link, uh, start a 15-minute chat with one of my team, um, you know, my team are all property investors themselves. Um, I've got you guys that have started, they, they're young and they're like, they come from the real estate industry and they've got like one property, two property, three property, four properties. And they're like in their teenagers and 20s and, and whatnot. And they've got like five, 10 properties going in their portfolios as well. So we're all here on the same journey. Uh, click on the link, follow us, uh, book in the chat and uh, we'll go from there. We'll catch up soon, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Have an awesome week. Bye for now. And remember, Thursday, new podcast dropping over at the No BS for Butcher podcast. Bye for now.